no money, crazy score lines, players defecting, and the big man watching over us. Welcome to the North Korean Premier League, where I'll be taking over as manager of Pyongyang City for one season. Will I be able to lead the capital city's team to glory, or will we crash and burn? Let's find out. My first job as manager was to set up and check out my team. I put my college education to work, stealing a tactic like the answers to a homework assignment due next period. I settled on a 4-1-3-2 formation that looked like it would lead to loads of goals. After slotting in all my players, it looked like we would need to sign a better CDM and someone to play left back. And maybe just some more players in general. We kind of didn't really have a lot of substitutes to use. Let's get her done, boy. I did some scouting around North Korea, hunting for some hidden gems, and slung out some trials to players who seemed promising. Then, we had our first preseason match. An intra-squad friendly that would give me a chance to check out my team. Shit! I ended up on the losing end, but the score was 6-2, and we were able to get a better look at some of our studly players. I was really excited by my two strikers, Joel Soul Song and So Tai Song. Also, I'm going to butcher every single name in this video, so bear with me. Bye. Our star player, though, was Ri Chol Myong, a spicy attacking midfielder. We managed to put pen to paper on a deal for a new defensive midfielder, Kang Nam Guan. Hopefully, he'd be able to help fill up our midfield and add some more depth to our team. But before I knew it, our first Premier League game arrived against Son Bong. <laughs> Bong. We went up early with a goal from Joe Soul Song and began to absolutely take over as Son Bong got a red card and fell apart. We racked up four more goals and Son Bong even got one of their own. What the heck was that? John. Oh my god, John. Just pass it back to the goalie. Before the end of the game, though, Sonbong managed to slip in one more red card for good measure. 5-1 to one was a great result in my first game in charge. Regardless, we pushed forward to the transfer window and managed to sign two more players, Kim Chong-il, another center midfielder, and Kim Ryu-song, a striker who would become instrumental later in the season. They were probably both going to be substitutes for the time being, but it was nice to bring in some more lads nonetheless. Next on our schedule was two back-to-back -back premier league games. We played against Walmido, where Ri Cho Myong had a stellar game, bagging two goals for himself and helping set up two others. Look at that little jig he just did. Fire. Then, we had our first real test of the season, a game against Riam Myong, one of the stronger teams in the league. We went down to an early goal, bruh, but saw a glimmer of hope when they got a red card soon after. Yo! We had oodles of chances, but just couldn't find the net. Riam Myong scored two more goals, leaving us feeling hopeless. Ugh. Until... Yes? Yes! We got two back-to-back -back goals, and it felt like the comeback was on. No way. The dream was short-lived though as Ryam Yang slotted in one more goal to end the game 4-2. Oh my god. A super disappointing result that had me questioning our ability to compete at the top of the league. Ryam Yang moved to the top of the table. Uh, we could have stopped them. But thankfully, we got to briefly forget about the league as our next game was the first round of the People's Cup, where we played against Terry Young Yang. A team from the North Korean 3rd Division. Yes, there's like four divisions in North Korea. So this one looked pretty easy and easy it was as we slapped and clapped them eight to two advancing to the next round. We returned to the league with a very close two to one game with Kian Gunga. Yo! After that, we checked in on the table. In third place was our next opponent, Kigwancha, and above us were April 25th, which we'd play after that. These two back-to-back -back games would be a tough test for our rowdy group of lads. Thankfully, though, we managed to sneak in two more signings before the transfer window closed. Ri Chung Il, another center midfielder to help round out the bench warmers, I mean, substitutes, and Kim Jong Chol, an attacking midfielder who would play on the wings and be a regular starter for our team. With these new big lads in tow, I didn't realize there was this much snow in North Korea. We took on Kigwancha, what was supposed to be one of our most difficult challenges yet, in a team that would certainly be in contention for the title. Oh, that was an absolute dinger. Though, difficult is not exactly how I would describe that match. The boys jerked and gurked Kigwancha six to nothing, putting in one of the top performances of the season. Zoo! It was a good match. April 25th, we're next. The Giants, the champions, winner of the last tons of championships. But we had one thing they didn't, the power of God and anime on our side. We went up early, and then they quickly equalized. A stressful beginning to the match. But just
just before I was about to tap out, our assistant manager, Bunny, stepped in and led the team. With her guidance, we managed to pull through and upset them 4-1. to one, A legendary result that had me dreaming of a championship, solidifying that we were, in fact, an absolute contender. That's what the boys call... Hogger. Our next Premier League match in this string of games was against Ramyansu, who didn't pose too much of a challenge as we clearly defeated them 2-0 in a clinical victory. Checking back at the league table though, we weren't the only team on a hot streak. Ryam Young was sneaking up the rankings and on a 10 game unbeaten streak. Thankfully though, we wouldn't have to play them for quite a while, so we focused on our next task, the People's Cup. We were scheduled to play another third division team, Maran Bob. Bong. <laughs> Bong. We dominated them 8-0 in a game that was easier than taking candy from a baby without hands. But things would get more difficult as we drew our first Premier League team of the cup, Son Bong, in the next round. Thankfully, we had a good history with them. Just pass it back to the goalie. Next up, we had three Premier League games in a row to bust through real quick. We won a tight 2-1 match against Amrak Kang, where we let up this atrocious goal. What is this guy even doing? A 4-0 below out against Jebby in a pretty tight game against Twable, where they came back from behind but still managed to lose to our group of big, sweaty men. This made a seven straight win streak. You'd think this would be a great sign of things to come, but this was when there started to be some unrest within the team. Our players were upset. Maybe it was how much I was playing them, or maybe it was because their parents never loved them. Who's to say? I told a bunch of them straight up lies to get them off my back, and we pressed forward for the time being, but little did I know that would come back to haunt me down the line. We easily ran by Sobeksu in a 3-0 glucking by the lads, then shifted our focus back to the People's Cup where we were set to play Sonbon. They were the first Premier League team we would play and our first real challenge of the Cup. We had one issue though. Our entire defense was suspended. That's some bullshit. We scrapped together the best team we could muster and pressed on with the match. Thankfully, we were lightly years above Songbong in talent. Our men stomped Songbong and Ri Chom Yang got a dinger of a free kick. Woo! doesn't get much better than that, baby. This win advanced us to the next round where we drew Kion Gungop for the quarterfinals, one step closer to the trophy. As unrest continued to grow in the locker room, we lined up for our Premier League match against Walmido. This was a wild game. Walmido came out hot and scored the first goal against us. Thankfully, though, we equalized it, trading a couple goals back and forth. Just as it seemed like the tides were turning in Walmido's favor, their inner demons took over. With them losing a man, we took absolute control of the match, steamrolling them in the final minutes to win 4-2. to two. What happened next, though, I was not prepared for. I got a surprise letter in my inbox. Our top goal scorer, Joe Sol Song, had defected from North Korea and signed with a Chinese team. Uh, so that just happened. This was a devastating blow to our team. Our gangbuster striking partnership was no more. We ended up having to slot in Kim Ryu Song, who was a promising striker, but definitely no Joel Soul Song. It is what it is, I suppose. Thankfully, though, the transfer window was approaching, so we would have the opportunity to look for more talent and potentially sign a more permanent replacement. I guess we can suffice till then and then see what happens. In the meantime, we had three Premier League games in rapid succession. A 3-0 schlacking of Sonbong, where we once again showed them who their father was. Then a straight-up BS loss to Ryom Yang. We scored early, but they clapped back with a quick 1-2. Bruh. We managed to tie it back up. But then they scored this heinous goal. If that's on size, then I'm a pope. E Editor Matt. Matt in the future, you add the line on that and see if that dude was off sides. They scored one more goal to just really make my blood boil, so I decided to send the water bottle on a joyride and proceed to the next match. Thankfully, my team got the message and returned to form with a 4-1 beating of Kion Gungop, helping to ease my pain and suffering. Ho oh, oh, ho, bar down dinger right there. Nonetheless, the transfer window opened up and I got straight to business. I was able to make a couple of moves. We signed a new backup striker, Kai Son Hyuk, who is kind of dookie, but what are you gonna do? We also snagged a promising young center back, Hak 
Kwong Chan on loan from Rivals and Rock Kang. This was a banger of a signing, and he would immediately be impactful in our next game against April 25. This was a grueling match straight from the get-go. April 25 scored. My goalie's a clown. Dropped his clown card in the pitch there. Dropped his clown license. Then we scored. Wasn't that good? Then April 25 scored. What? And then our new low knee center back dinged in this absolute screamer. Oh! Just as it seemed like we were starting to heat up, April 25 cooked in one more to make it a disappointing 3-2 loss. <sighs> Bummer. Thankfully, though, we got to take a quick break from our recent mediocre Premier League form and focus on the People's Cup quarterfinals against Kion Gungop. Things were a little bit hairy, though, since we definitely weren't able to field our best team. Everyone knows the great North Korean saying, it is what it is. Regardless, we started off spicy with an early goal. They got one back, but we got even spicier, scoring two goals to make it three to one. Tight, 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 tight. Surely this would be easy, right? Wrong. They got one more to make it 3-2, a scoreline that briefly had my butthole puckering until we dinged in two more to make it a cozy 5-2 victory. Lovely. Then, in the semifinals draw, we got paired with M. Rock Kang, the former club of our new lone East center back. Surely that wouldn't impact the results. We'd have to wait and see, though, as we had two Premier League games to smash through in the meantime. First, we played Kigwancha. Sadly, this was not nearly as easy as our 6 to nothing meeting earlier in the season. This was a gritty game, tighter than two balls in a sack. Both teams had tons of chances, but thankfully, we pulled ahead 2-1 to one and moved along. Next, we had a match against Rim Young, Su. Lining up, we decided to give our star center back a rest. It fueled a slightly less hench team. This came back to bite us, though. We ended up tying Rim Yong Su in a match that should have been a clear win, which it may have been had we not gotten a red card in the second half. Oops. Next, we get our daily double. We had a back-to-back -back double header against Amrock Kang. Our first game was the semifinals of the People's Cup. We breezed by them in a squeaky clean 2 to nothing win. That is pog. Hog. This launched us into the finals where we drew Sobeksu. Pretty a good final if I do say so myself. What say you with the final, huh? You gonna piss on my floor? That's a yes. But before then, we had our rematch with Amrock Kang in the Premier League where they wanted revenge. This was a crazy tight match with a boring first half and an insanely close second half. Both teams had chances by the dozen, but nobody could break the seal. It left the match in a 0-0 tie. Checking back in on the league table, Ryeo Myung was right behind us. We were a cool five points ahead, but they had a game in hand, making for a title race tighter than my grip on reality. They will be catching up to us in a sketchy manner. What made it even closer, though, was our next match with Huebol. We went up early, but they tied it soon after. We scored again, putting victory in sight. Spicy. Surely this was in the bag, right? Wrong. We made an oopsies and got a penalty. They slotted it in, making for a 2-2 tie. Jeez. Finally, we had our very first Asian Champions League match. Our chance to showcase our group of big, sweaty North Korean lads on the world stage. In our bracket was Bashundara, from Bangladesh, Kobe Leon from Japan, and United City SC from the Philippines, who we would go on to play in our first match. For some reason, playing a team from the Philippines, I'm pretty confident. Could a measly North Korean team compete with a real club from a normal country? Well, I immediately had my answer. We went up 2-0, leaving me ecstatic. Heck yeah. But they managed to clap back with a goal, and then another, and then another. Thankfully, we managed to tie it up before the end. Yes! Not our best result, but I at at least knew we could hold our own with competition from other countries. Looking forward, we had two Premier League matches left. If we won our next game against Jebby, we would nearly cinch the title. I was expecting a grueling, tough match where Jebby would try and drag us down with them. Our boys had different plans though. Our team of big lads dinged and pinged in goal after goal after goal. Jebby literally couldn't stop us from scoring. We were hot, spicy, absolutely on fire. We managed to bang in 12 goals and and then the comeback. Just joshing ya. Jeez.
That was crazy. We won 12 to 1 and essentially won the league. That is, as long as Ryam Young doesn't win by over 12 goals in their last match. What are the odds of that? Up next was the People's Cup Finals. The North Korean People's Games Final. One more match until glory. One game closer to our dream. It began to slip away, though, as Sobeksu dinged in the first goal, leaving us quaking in our boots. Oh, that's a wrinkle I was not expecting. We managed to pull ourselves together, though, and equalized. Run with it, boy. Run with that ball, boy. Boy. The game got tighter and tighter as we took them into extra time, but our inner demons took over, and we got a red card. Our dream was slipping away. This called for drastic measures. We're going to play the wiener. I dug deep into my pocket and pulled out my secret weapon, the wiener formation. With this tactic, our glizzy warriors penetrated their back line with full force, scoring a miraculous goal in the last minutes of the match. Woo! We did it, buddy. We did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, yeah. We did it. We were the people's champ of the people's cup. The trophy was rightfully ours. Look at that guy in the middle just jamming. Exquisite. Now, back to the Asian Champions League, our next conquest. We were up against Bashundara, our Bangladeshian enemies. They're in last place. This is a very tight group, though. We meant business. It was time to show them who was their papa. We went down early, which wasn't great, but thankfully our men dug deep, managing to score a whopping four in a row. Bashundara managed to sneak one in at the end, but it didn't matter. Our Asian champion league aspirations were still alive. Finally, we were entering our last Premier League game of the season against Sobeksu. Oh, the only thing that needs to happen is Ryomyong can't win by 12. If, if, if they don't win by 12, we win the league. We'll see what happens. So it's safe to say we pretty much had this one in the bag. We fielded a subpar team due to a load of suspensions and hit the races. Our guys were raring to go and took fate into their own hands, backing a 3-1 to one victory, securing our fate as Premier League champions. We won the league! Woo! Can I get a, can I get a amen? We hit double champ status, but could we make it triple? We turned our attention back to the Asian Champions League in our match against Kobe Leon from Japan. They were in first place, so this match was super important. Losing would make our job a lot harder. We started the match hotter than your mother, slotting in a goal to take the lead. We were on top of the world. That is, until they slotted in two goals to make it a 2-1 win for them. Not ideal. Now this, this is where things started to fall apart. We were deep into the season. I mean deep. Essentially in the next season, contracts started to expire, loans started to end, and we lost some valuable players. Our star center back, Kang Kuk Chol, and our loanee, Pak Kwang Chan, went their separate ways, leaving the club. It's okay though. They were dead to me. Good luck to them. We had an Asian Champions League to win. Our next match was our second one against United City FC from the Philippines. We had to make a statement. We put together a scrappy team with the players we had and got to work. Needless to say, our defense was still solid because the lads slotted in goal after goal after goal after goal, banging them up 4-0 in a decisive victory. Our next match, though, was absolutely crucial. Kobe Leon was well in the lead, and only one team would advance, so we literally had to win. Sadly, though, it wasn't in the cards. We played a really bad game and lost 2-1, to one, ending our chances of the triple champ status. I uh, guess it just wasn't meant to be. That's, uh, that's a bummer. And, uh, if you're curious, we had one more game left, and we tied Bashundara 2-2 in our last match. But, uh, two out of three championships in one season is nothing to scoff at. We definitely held our own and showed Kim Jong-un who's boss. Now, make sure to go follow my Twitch stream, you nerds.